Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. In Maricopa County, at the cotton field and the golf course on Baseline Road, it was cool, and at night, we were driving on Baseline Road, going west. Myself, my wife, and nephew saw maybe two cars swerve around the road ahead. As we approached, I slowed down, and then a creature stepped across half the road in front of us, and into and across a small canal and onto a golf course. By then, I had turned my scout around, deciding to use 51 Avenue instead of 67 Avenue. I asked everyone what they saw, and their response was Bigfoot, except for my wife, who just wanted out of the area. As far as the description, it was big and tall, with dark, matted, stringy hair. I could not see its face very well, because I was too busy turning the scout around. The creature didn't seem to care if we were there. It just stepped across the road, ignoring the cars. There is very little traffic in this area at night. I've grown up in this general area and have roamed the island mountains and the desert areas, including the remote areas of the Gila River Indian Reservation. I have been told about the unusual creature with different names, but having the same ape-like form. My friends on the reservation have called me out in the middle of the night concerning these creatures. It was about 8 p.m. and a cool night. The creature was observed in the headlights of our scout. This is a rural area with island desert, mountains, and an Indian reservation to the southwest. Also, Salt River is to the north and the city of Phoenix is to the east. There was a golf course on one corner and the rest is cotton fields and citrus groves. On to the next one. In 1834, there were reports of a giant wild man that was seen by many people in the Ozarks of Arkansas. A hairy man was being seen in Poinsett County in 1834, nearby as well as Greene County, also in 1834. In St. Francis County, Arkansas, in 1834, numerous witnesses had seen a hairy wild man running around. This creature was of gigantic stature, hairy, and with long shoulder-length hair, and could leap 14 feet at a time. Footprints found were 14 inches long. On to the next one. Sometime in March 1851, Mr. Hamilton and another hunter in Greene County in Arkansas saw a herd of cows being chased by a gigantic animal whose body was covered with hair and resembled a wild man. The head had long locks that enveloped the neck and shoulders, and the man-beast looked at the witness before deliberately turning away and sprinting off at a great speed. Sometimes it would leap 12 to 14 feet at a time, impossible for a human or a bear. The creature had been reported in this area for the previous 17 years, in an early report of the incident, wrote, During March last, Mr. Hamilton of Greene County, Arkansas, while out hunting with an acquaintance, observed a drove of cattle in a state of apparent alarm, evidently pursued by some dreaded enemy. Halting for the purpose, they soon discovered, as the animal fled by them, that they were followed by an animal bearing the unmistakable likeness of humanity. He was of gigantic stature, the body being covered with hair and the head with long locks that fairly enveloped his neck and shoulders. The wild man, 
therefore we must so call him, after looking at them deliberately for a short time, turned and ran away with great speed, leaping from 12 to 14 feet at a time. His footprints measured 13 inches each. This singular creature has long been known traditionally in St. Francis, Green, and Poinsett counties, Arkansas sportsmen and hunters, having described him so long as 17 years since. A planter indeed saw him very recently, but withheld his information lest he should not be credited until the account of Mr. Hamilton and his friend placed the existence of the animal beyond cavil. On to the next one. During spring of 1920 in Logan County, southwest of Boonville, near Pilot and White Oak Mountain, there are only logging trails and a forest service road on White Oak Mountain. A hairy, man-like creature was after my great-grandfather's horse. The horse was trying to pull away from the tree he was tied to. My great-grandfather heard a commotion, approached his horse, and observed the creature, which then ran into the brush. He also stated that he had seen something similar on top Pilot Mountain a few years before. He told me at the time this thing was taller and heavier than he was. My great-grandfather was six foot two and a hundred and ninety pounds. At the time, several family members and friends were picking berries. After this incident, everyone departed. He also stated this was early afternoon. I have been near this area and to the summit of White Oak Mountain. This is a very wooded, bushy country, difficult to traverse. Mostly southern pine with numerous creeks and bottoms. Virtually no people reside in the area. On to the next one. During the fall of 1943 in Lano County, this has been too many years gone by to make a difference. I just wanted to say I know he is real. This was between Memphis and Little Rock in Arkansas. I was six at the time. My family were on a bus coming from West Memphis, Arkansas to Fort Smith in Arkansas. My sister and I were in the back of the bus on the long seat so we could sleep. The bus driver stopped the bus to use the wood. He jumped back in the bus and said to hold on everybody, there's a big ape out there that almost got me. As the bus started to move, my sister and I looked out the back window and saw what I believed to be a Bigfoot crossing the road. At the time, I didn't know about Bigfoot, so we thought it was an ape that had escaped from a carnival. It looked like an ape that we had seen in a carnival once. It took long strides crossing the road and was not leaning over on its hands to walk. It was more like a real big man in an ape costume. The picture to this day is still fresh in my mind, and it wasn't an ape that I'd ever seen in zoos or carnivals. Everybody talked all night about it, and nobody tried to sleep after that. The bus was half full of people waiting for the driver to finish his call of nature so we could start moving again. My sister and I got the best view because we were looking out the back window trying to see what the driver was talking about. My parents and a few more saw him start to cross the road behind the bus. My sister and I watched him cross and enter the woods on the other side. It was nighttime, full moon or near a full moon. There were hills and plenty of trees. We were on the highway and he crossed the highway going south. Both sides of the highway had woods. On to the next one. My friend Larry and I initially ran across some evidence of a Sasquatch being in the area we were hiking, and the evidence turned into a full-blown face-to-face sighting in the later part of this hike. We had planned to hike the Cascade Head Trail on this particular weekend, and as fate would have it, the weather was not exactly cooperating. There was drizzle and fog, but as it turns out, the conditions worked favorably in regard to the initial evidence we had found, evidence which then had us on guard for the rest of the hike. 
which I believe was the cause of us ultimately seeing this creature. The two of us were well into the hike, and I must tell you that there are certain areas on this trail where boards were placed in certain areas alongside the trail to prevent erosion. They were also used to form steps for lack of a better description, to keep the soil from washing away the trail. We were entering the third such area during the hike where we encountered these boards and were steeped in a dense fog that was enveloped the canopy which surrounded us. I must say, looking back, that it was a very surreal environment which we found ourselves in. I didn't give much thought to it then, but hindsight being 2020, I mention it to you now. Some of these makeshift steps were close to 16 inches down and they were buried in this mud-soaked soil. I was taking the lead on this hike, and from the looks of the muddy soil, nobody had been through here this day before we had come through. I was looking just ahead of where I was walking, being careful not to lose my footing on these steps, when I saw a huge impression in the muddy trail that was made perpendicular to the direction which the trail was heading. I called Larry up to where I was, and the two of us stood over and looked down upon what was most definitely a huge human-like footprint in the mud. It looked fairly fresh, and my reason for saying that is that moisture from the water-soaked soil was just beginning to puddle in the bottom of the singular track. We had actually performed a little experiment in the mud nearby, stepping into it with our own boots to reproduce the same effect. Based on the results of our little test, our opinion was that this print had been made minutes before we had come upon it. The print, which was somewhat splayed out in the mud, was about 10 inches deep, which was three times as deep as our own experimental print. We had caught it just in time to see the wide, stubby toe print impression. Had we come along five minutes later, they would have been gone. The footprint had to be close to 20 inches long, and whatever had laid it down was a substantial creature indeed. The largest grizzly print that I had ever seen belonged to a bear that was about 1,500 pounds. That print didn't even come close to the size of this one. So, I could only imagine what the size of the creature this print belonged to. In the moment, I looked at Larry and him at me, and our eyes, having not said a word to each other, told the tale. This was the footprint of a Sasquatch, and it was here with us in the woods. The two of us looked into the woods in the direction the print was heading, and then we cautiously parted some of the wet undergrowth, stepping off of the trail into the bushes. As soon as we had entered the bushes, we heard something dart away through the trees, but saw nothing. I had already felt a cold shiver run down my spine when the reality of what had laid the footprint down connected with my mind. But when we heard whatever we heard run away unseen, I was quickly becoming the victim of a full-blown freakout. We continued onward, following the trail, until we reached a point where the ferns and the undergrowth were so tight to us that we were literally brushing them out of the way with our bodies as we passed through. It was then that Larry had said, Hey, did you see that? I hadn't seen anything, because I had been walking with my head somewhat down. So, I asked him what he had seen. Larry told me he saw a dark figure appear in an opening in the bushes, and then, it disappeared as soon as it had appeared. He pointed at a spot which was about 80 to 100 feet ahead of us. Off to our right, we stood our ground for a moment and then we slowly made our way forward to the spot where he said he had seen something, all of this while hearing nothing. Had I been alone that day, I would have retreated after seeing the footprint, but between the two of us, neither had even mentioned turning back and so we moved ever forward. We reached a point where we were well out of the muddiest part of the trail, and we had come upon a spot where the trees on our right 
framed somewhat of a panoramic view of a hillside in the distance, in the middle of this so-called framing, which I just described, there was a pine which was considerably smaller than the surrounding trees, which was standing alone, rising above the brush which it was growing within. No sooner had we begun to look into the distance, beholding this panorama, did the smaller pine begin to violently thrash back and forth. The tree must have been some 30 feet tall or more, with at least half of it being concealed by the surrounding brush and bushes, and it was being shaken back and forth like a whip, all of which was happening while the trees around it were dead still. The two of us were looking at each other as if to say, is this really happening? We had heard nothing and seen nothing, and yet here was this tree, some hundred feet or so away from us, being shaken back and forth like a cheerleader's pom-pom. This singular event had really gotten the two of us to thinking that the only thing capable of performing such an act would be the Sasquatch, who had left the prince we had discovered earlier in the hike. The question was looming in our minds, was it in fact following us? When I tell you that we were getting a bit spooked by this whole affair, that would be an understatement. But to stop and head back or to move forward really made no difference at this point. The fact was that the day was starting to clear up, and at least in my own mind, I felt as though this thing might return to its lair at some point. If it, if it was a Sasquatch, and that would be the end of it. But that thought process was about to change. It wasn't all that long after this tree shaking that I just described when we found ourselves clear of the dense canopy of the forest. The sun was shining brightly and there were still a lot of trees, but we were breaking out into some more open areas where there were large swaths of tall grass and bramble interspersed with the pine. We had just stopped in front of a small sign which was placed on a stake in a field which read fragile habitat area closed looking out over this area it didn't seem much different than many other areas which we had seen and walked through so we were wondering just what was so special about this area to designate it as such with the placement of the sign there were a number of tall bushy pines to our left side and our forward view was that of a field with weeds and some small trees. We could just make out a hint of the coastline in the distance, and a bit of blue water far off in the horizon. It was then, without warning, that a huge, brown-colored beast of unimaginable proportions came casually walking out from behind the trees, loping across this field in front of us some seventy-five feet or so away, I would guess that the brush which it was walking through was some five to six feet high, and its body was clear of it, by perhaps four feet or so. As it walked by, without any hesitation, it turned its head slowly to glance directly at us, but it kept walking. It turned away from us and disappeared down what must have been a slope out of our sight. We looked at each other and started to backtrack quickly with neither of us being willing to stay in the area of what we were certain was a huge Sasquatch. As we walked and talked, both of us were fully convinced that this creature had intended for us to see it. First, with what we were calling the warning of the tree shake, and second, by making itself fully visible to us. Trust me, it was an ever-increasing show by this creature that it didn't want us there, and who knew how it may have ended had we stayed. For the entire hike back out, we had neither heard nor seen anything else, but we couldn't help thinking that this creature was stealthily watching us as we left its domain. The thought had also crossed our minds that perhaps there was more than one Sasquatch on either side of us. I say this because, after seeing the creature in the field, I was wondering if the singular footprint which we had seen earlier, as big as it was, was too small to be that of the creature we had seen walking. It had to have been some nine feet tall and fifteen hundred pounds. P 
perhaps even more. It was absolutely massive. The upper body appeared to be virtually close to two feet thick from front to back, and its arms and hands were off the charts in both size and thickness. The head seemed to be directly connected to the upper body, and by that, I mean that there was no neck. It had turned its entire upper torso to look at us. Its face had what I would describe as an overhanging brow, and the nose was flat and broad. There was very little hair on the face, with the exception of what I will describe as hair above the lip and on the chin, giving it the appearance of having a scraggly beard. We made it all the way back to our starting point, with no further activity being seen or heard from the beast. And yet, it had made an indelible mark on both of us, which is something we will never forget. I hope you enjoyed those encounters. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day, so be sure to hit that notification bell and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!